Got your homemade still here. We got a stainless steel pressure cooker from Walmart. It's $49. Has to be stainless steel. You cannot use aluminum. We also got a little cheap $16 hot plate from Walmart because you don't want to use gas obviously when you're using around working around uh, alcohol. Um, you're going to need some corks. A couple of corks, a couple of sizes here and there. Here's actually one. Uh, you're going to use it to put your temperature gauge in, obviously. And you're going to use it for your pressure release over here. This is a pressure release. You're going to cork that off so no pressure gets out. You don't want no leaks in the system whatsoever. Um, obviously, it's flammable, which you're working around, and you don't want anything to leak and catch on fire and blow yourself up. <coughs> Teflon works great. You can actually use it, and it will contaminate your alcohol. Teflon. This this pressure cooker actually had a piece in it for a safety release, a cap that went on this. Anyways, we put a Teflon around it and wrapped it, and then put our three eighths gauge copper tubing, which goes in our five gallon bucket. We just put that around it, and it fits on there perfectly. So, got our copper tubing, goes down to our 5 gallon bucket. We actually made a bracket 2 inches spacing for our coil spiral. Um, gives you a nice real slow run, you know, gives it a nice time to, you know, turn back into a liquid. Um, you're going to need uh, some glue. I used JB Weld here. You also need some uh, caulk or sealant, some sort, right there. This is where it comes out. Obviously, you can see it dripping here. Uh, sometimes it drips fast, sometimes it drips slow. It's all determined on the, your spiral. So if you get your spiral down correctly, then you'll be all right. If you don't, then it's going to drip like how it's dripping here. Sometimes it drips fast, sometimes it drips really slow like it's doing now. We're just running line today for a test run pretty much. We just got this uh, set up just up and running. Actually works very well. You never want to cook over 212. I would never go over 210 really because Obviously, water boils at 212, so if you're boiling over at 212, then you're going to cook over. Okay? So, you want to stay around maybe 200 at the most, uh, 180 at the least, and you're going to run really slow at 180. So, we're running a smart wine today just to make sure everything's working good. We actually have cornmeal and, and uh, cornmeal and oats uh, fermenting right now. And I just wanted uh, another bottle, as you can see here, to uh, ferment in. We actually have six ounces here already run. Um, it's very clear. This wine gives you kind of a fruity alcohol kind of taste. It's actually very good. Um, it's a little burny. If you could always slower the better. You never want to cook fast. I started cooking too fast at the beginning and it gives you the first two ounces you always want to throw out because it's acetone obviously. But it gives you more of a cloudy yellow or murky. And you don't want to drink that. That's bad. It's, it's getting burnt. You're cooking it too fast. So slow it down a little bit. Slower the better. You never want to rush because your end product's going to be your rush product. So nice and slow. You can see here it's dripping real nice. 
We already have about, we almost have six ounces here again. Looks like five about now. <laughs> so, it's about it guys. Real cheap, simple way to make alcohol. It's um, not a system for you to, you know, make millions of dollars on, but something you can have fun with. Science, kind of a science project. And uh, hopefully here next week we'll run uh, the cornmeal and uh, oats. This is supposed to be pretty good. We'll have our hydrometer. We'll show you a hydrometer test. And uh, that's about it for right now. Thanks for watching.